Hi guys, I thought that we might spend some time, I know you have a double today, but we might spend some time looking at carbonyl compounds and how they get named. So if you can go back to page 18 of your notes, we're going to pick up where we left off. As you might remember, we left off by doing the amines. And the last one was 3-pentanamine, again, just losing the E off of pentane and writing the word amine at the end and understanding that the amine group is off of the third carbon, and so you have three pentanamine. Unfortunately, this isn't a Microsoft Word document, so it becomes a lot harder for me to write on it. So I'll do the best that I can. Maybe I'll trace it out with my mouse or something, but whatever. It's pretty straightforward, and I'll show you why. As once again, the situation is that you don't have to memorize any of these naming rules because they're all sitting there on table R, which was here. Where did it go? Okay. Table R has a whole bunch of organic functional groups. We've done halides, we've done alcohols, we've done ethers, we've done amines. We now have the rest of the compounds, which if you notice, all have something in common. Aldehydes, ketones, organic acids, esters, and amides all have the same thing as part of their compound. They have this C double bond O group, and that is called a carbonyl. I know it looks like carbonyl, but it's carbonyl. Um, that's just how that's pronounced. Um, carbonyl compounds have a CO group. That is the carbonyl group. And if it has a carbonyl group, then it's called a carbonyl compound. No, you're never going to be assessed on another regions, but I'm going to call them carbonyl compounds because that's what they are. Depending on what's going on next to the carbonyl, though, and I'll show you again on table R, what's going on next door to the carbonyl is different in each of them, and that's what makes each compound its own thing. So for aldehyde, it's got an H on one side. For ketone, it's got R groups, a carbon groups on each side. Organic acids have something on one side, but an OH on the other. Uh, esters have a hydrocarbon on one side, then an O and a hydrocarbon on the other side. And amine, uh, amides, sorry, have um, an NH, usually an NH2 group like this um, off to the side. And once again, you have models of how to name all of these compounds, and they make it really nice for you. If there is a number, then it's possible that there might need might need to be a number. If there isn't a number, then you will never need a number for that kind of compound. Similar to the way that for alcohols, they list one propanol. Do you always need a number for alcohols? No, methanol, ethanol don't need one. But once you get to propanol and beyond, you do. So if they will list, you, list a number for you. But for ethers, you will never need a number. And so they don't provide you one with a number. Same thing's true here. You'll never need a number for an aldehyde. Why? Because the carbonyl always has to be next to an H. So it's always on the end of the chain. Organic acids never need a number. Notice the model never gives you a number. That's again because this carbonyl has to be on the end of the chain because it's next to an OH. Amine, uh, amides also never need a number because the carbonyl is always next to the NH, usually an NH2 group right here. But the other ones could. Ketones, uh, where ketones right here, the carbonyl could be anywhere in the middle of the chain. So you have to say where the carbonyl is. Here it's saying you it's pentanone, it's five carbons long, but it has a carbonyl at the second carbon. So it's possible you would need, need one there. Esters will never need a number, uh, which is why there isn't a number in here, but it is the, probably the trickiest of all the names to do, and so we'll do it a little bit later. Let's go and talk about aldehydes. So anyway, what does it say here? Depending on which ones they are, they have different naming rules. However, you can find them just by looking at an example uh, at an example on the reference table. Use your resources. It's really a big key here. All right, here we go. Aldehydes. This is a carbonyl group with one R attached, and I'll see the example. Here's the R that's attached right here, and an H on the other side. Find the parent carbon chain, drop the E like we've been doing, and then add AL to the end. Not, and how do you pronounce AL? You might be going AL, but you can't do that because alcohols end in OL, and so we make we have to make them sound different. So it's an aldehyde, so we say AL at the end. No numbering is needed because the carbonyl is always at the end of the chain. That's the definition of an aldehyde. Carbonyl right here next to an H. Notice the carbon is still making four bonds. One, two, three, four. And so you have to look at the parent carbon chain. It is three carbons long. Yes, you have to count the carbonyl every time. So this would be propanal, P-R-O-P-A-N-A-L. Drop the E off of propane, add A-L on the end, propanal. Why don't you go ahead, you can press pause for a second, and in your uh, smush pairs, I think you can probably handle this. 
Um, I'd like you to move your desks, and I want you to answer this second one. Press pause, and then I will tell you the answer after the pause. I'll give the second pause now. Okay. This is six carbons long with a carbonyl. It's an aldehyde because it's got an H on this side. So this is hexanal. Uses for aldehydes. There are different kinds of aldehydes. There are a few flavorings, including cherry and almond. Um, oddly enough, that's actually the same ester, uh, the same aldehyde, sorry, that is responsible for the flavor of cherry and almond. If you think about it in just a moment, there is actually a connection between those two flavors. I know it's weird to think about it, but think about it for a second. Also, there are aldehydes like cinnamaldehyde, which is responsible for a lot of the flavor of cinnamon. So um, aldehydes are used on a routine basis. So that's a story in aldehydes. Ketones. Ketones might need a number. Uh, if it's too short, then it won't need a number, but it might need a number. Um, for instance, if you look at this one with only three carbons, it's a ketone because there's a carbonyl in the middle here. But if it were over here, that would be an aldehyde because it would just be an H. And if it was over here, it would be an aldehyde. So because of that, not all of them need a number, but many of them do. Um, so it's a carbonyl where there's an R group on each side, a carbon group on each side. No H, no O, H, no nothing, just carbonyl, uh, carbonyl with hydrocarbons on either side. Find the parent carbon chain, add own, that's not one, that's own ketone, so own to the end, dropping the E as usual, and number the carbon that has the double bonded oxygen. So this one, for instance, would be 2-butanone, butanone, not butone, butanone, 2-butanone, B-U-T-A-N-O-N-E. All right, similar to last time, I want you to press pause, and I want you and your smush pair to answer and name that one. Go. All right, I'm guessing you're back. So what'd you get? You're right. I'm guessing you wrote it. It's three heptanone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So heptane, but it's an, a ketone, carbonyl in the middle, three heptanone. H-E-P-T-A-N-O-N-E, -E, heptanone. Now, of course, you could have counted from the other side, but that would have given you five. And so that's a, that's a higher number, so that's no good. Same thing's true here, by the way. I know I quickly said this was two butanone, but it's two because if you count from this side, it's on the second carbon. Count from this side, it's on the third carbon, so you gotta go with the second. Nail polish remover is acetone, which is an old name. It's really propanone according to the current naming structure, uh, naming rules, and propanone, see, propane, with uh, a ketone instead of being an alkane, so it's propanone. And again, as I said before, this one doesn't actually need numbers because if it were in any other spot, it would be an aldehyde, would be propanal. And that's the story on ketones. So, so far you've done two of the types of carbonyl compounds, aldehydes, ketones, and now we move down halfway down page 19, we have organic acids. Those are very easily recognizable since the carbonyl group is bound to an OH, forming a CO, and the CO is like, here's the example here, CO, OH, get it? C O O H in the condensed structural formula, and we call that a Ku group. I uh, find the carbon chain, add oic acid to the end of the name. Again, drop the E as usual. No numbering is necessary because the C O O H is the end of a chain. You can't have anything on the other side, and so there's no numbering needed. So here we are. There are two carbons. Once again, we count the carbonyl carbon. There are two carbons, and therefore we find the name of this. Acid, which is ethan, because ethane, right? Ethanoic acid, E T H A N O I C acid, ethanoic acid, which is actually the stuff in vinegar. Oh, wait, it actually says it right down here. Ethanoic acid and acetic acid. Acetic acid is listed in your text, uh, in your reference table also in table K, which is the acids table. Um, it, it's the same thing. Eth uh, ethanoic acid and acetic acid are the same thing. And take a look. CH3. COOH. You may remember that from when we talked about weak acids. That was actually a condensed structural formula. CH3 COOH. Once again, I'm not, I know I've not been referring back to it, but it's all right here. Organic acid COOH. This would be propanoic acid, this one. One, two, three carbon acid. I want you to do these other two acids with your smush pair right now. Okay, um, we're approaching the end of this video. Apparently I've got 20 seconds left. Um, so we'll wrap this up quickly. This is butanoic acid, which smells like puke because it's a molecule in puke. And this one is two, three, four, five, six, hexanoic acid, which also doesn't smell so nice, but that's hexanoic acid. So ethanoic acid, butanoic acid, 
and hexanoic acid.